another quick one on, on tricks is how do I get the confidence to do new tricks? Uh, well, one good thing is like to imagine yourself doing the trick in your head a lot before you do it. Um, that's been really helpful for me, just visualizing what I'm doing. And I can sort of, and then obviously you need to practice until, I mean, I get to a point when I see that a trick is possible. Like, it's like almost feeling like, okay, I'm ready for this trick. Mm -hmm. It's like coming from above or something. Okay, I'm ready for this. And then I can start picturing it in my head. And then I just picture it. And then sometimes I just know, like, I just see how I do it completely. And then mm -hmm. usually it always works out. Um, so I think, I mean, practice, <laughs> ski a lot. And, and, and tr like, I mean, like every sport, uh, I think just try it a lot and be like, I've been tactical with my skiing too, even though I'm like creative, I've been like really systematic as well. And mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it takes practice and then try to imagine the tricks as well. Like mm -hmm. the more you think of them, the easier they're going to be. Yeah, love that you bring that up. And also to just highlight it even more, practice practicing ski tricks in your mind because it's kind of difficult to do an entire trick in your mind. We mentioned flat sevens. When you, if you do a flat five, it's kind of easy to visualize in your mind. If you imagine you go towards the jump, you set it, you never really have a blind time, just a little bit in the beginning. And then you spot the landing, bring it around. Easy to visualize compared to a flat seven where you see the ground less. And um, so, yeah, it's really useful to practice that skill of visualization. And also there's a second way of visualize. So that's how I visualize. But some people, I don't know if you can do this, visualize like outside of your body that they can see the jump like from the side of it, like a spectator watching mm. a big air contest mm. and see yourself doing the trick and see what it's going to look like from the outside. Mm. Can you do that? I usually just visualize sort of the feeling like I don't even go into too much of specific I just I kind of just I, yeah no I'm I'm doing it more like from my perspective like coming off the kicker how I'm pulling and then sort of how it feels like getting around mm -hmm. and pairing up different experience through my skiing that sort of that I can sort of puzzle together into this new trick and then I can sort of build up a vision of how I feel like it's going to be done mm -hmm. yes but that seems cool to, to look at it from the outside perspective as well. Yeah. Have you done that? No, I don't do that. It doesn't work for me. But it's probably because I haven't practiced doing that. And I can imagine doing this outside perspective visualization could maybe open up some more creativity because you can like picture what you want it to look like for the audience. Like if you do a um, cork five with a mad shift it towards like the audience who's standing on the left side of the jump, for example. Yeah. That you can like try to make it look extra oh, good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, can, you can, exactly, you can picture yourself in, yeah, that's a good yeah. trick. Yeah, or if you have like a, a camera standing on the knuckle filming you, exactly. that you at the end kind of fist bump the camera almost and smile into it. Yeah. Uh, which yeah. could be for sure. I mean, that's kind of cool. For sure. Yeah, I think interacting with the with the crowd is is cool, and I think that's coming more in skiing. Like the more interactive you can be as a skier, the more the more success on social media and stuff you will have. I yeah, guess. I think so too.